Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Behind the camera is always in a good mood and chatty David or Dave, and I welcome you to the first day in 2018. Hope you celebrated New Year's Eve very well, that you're all doing fine, that you're safe, and welcome to another video presentation where uh, here we will be taking apart or disassembling this single bay NAS hard drive or NAS device from Western Digital MyCloud uh, 3 terabytes. Now before I actually proceed with the uh, disassembly of this device, I'm just going to point out that the hard drive that is residing in this enclosure is in fact uh, 2 terabytes in capacity. Uh, and not only that, it's not um, from the red edition or the red family from Western Digital. It's actually a purple edition uh, hard drive. So two terabytes capacity, say the three bus speed or the connection as such. So the model is uh, WD20PRX. Uh, the original hard drive that was inside this enclosure is now happily doing fine in another, but yet still older, still a uh, single bay NAS hard drive from Western Digital again. Uh, and that one is called or labeled uh, my book world edition white light uh, i have a playlist for that on my youtube channel uh, i think there are six videos check it out so that is where the original hard drive that was inside this enclosure is now located and that hard drive was a uh, red edition family from western digital even though it had a white label but it was still from the red family uh, of course you know it was uh, the model WD30EFRX. So here, for the purpose of this video presentation, I'm using a two terabyte hard drive from Western Digital again. In essence, therefore, uh, the MyCloud three terabyte only signifies the enclosure model of this device and not the actual currently present hard drive that is inside. I'll show you uh, the bottom side of this device in a couple of moments to show you the label. So this is the label on the bottom. So here you can see this 30 number here from the part number. This uh, signifies that only the enclosure as such is from a uh, 3 terabyte model or edition, but the hard drive inside is different. But you will see that when I will remove this white oval uh, front mask of the enclosure when I was separated from the main body. So that's it. To initiate the divorce between the parties and one party being uh, this main central plastic piece of the enclosure and the other party or member being this uh, front oval white mask, you'll need some sort of a set of prying tools. You could probably just in short use a much more dull knife or a flat headed screwdriver but I have been very fond of uh, the set of prying tools that I have here I'll put a link to this and as well as the screwdriver set in the description box below so you can get your set on eBay at least that is where I got mine this set is uh, very plentiful but for the purpose of this video presentation to, to be uh, completely honest I will be just needing or using this nickel plated uh, metallic rod or prying piece because this one here it has a nice pointy tip and here a little bit duller one this one is perfect for this task because you know uh, the tip both of them are pointy enough to get between the mask and the main body of the enclosure uh, but still dull enough not to scrape the plastic or break anything off but of course that pretty much depends on the person who is opening uh, this NAS device nevertheless so I'll be just using this even though he, he have here a lot of other tools but this one is more than enough for this task now in regards to the screwdriver set uh, you have here 31 and 1 set of screwdrivers uh, even though this is you know a very plentiful array of bits and the allotted screwdriver such you'll be only needing basically a one Phillips bit or one Phillips screwdriver and I think 
perhaps two torque sizes or two torque bits or two torque screwdrivers. But that is after we extract the hard drive with the controller attached to it. Uh, so only after that, first we need to open this up. So that's it. Now let's get started or cracking. So we're going to position the NAS device or the NAS hard drive in this manner and we're going to start somewhere around here. And we're going to use the pointy tip to try to get in between the main body of the enclosure and the oval piece of the mask. So we've gotten in between. Now we're just going to try to gently lift it a little bit. Uh -huh. All right, I'm going to show you the locking latches that are inside. So as you can see here is one. You don't want to break that. Okay, so we'll go underneath. Okay, so everything is opening up. I think here is the other one. There you see a little bit on the right, little right of the rod. That is the location of the second one on this side. So don't break that. So we want to go underneath and push the rod downwards so that we achieve just a little separation of the mask from the main body. And then we repeat the procedure on this side. So we'll try again somewhere around the golden middle. So we can have a look at where are the, the locking latches here. So you he see the, here is one right above the LAN port or the RJ45 connector. Now the second one is here. Maybe you can see it a little bit. Okay, so again we go underneath and we try to lift it a little bit. We push the rod downwards. So again we go here and we try to go all around. Okay, so I think we have achieved the necessary lifting between the oval piece of the mask and the main body. So that's it. So now we're going to insert the prying piece in this area and we're just going to push. There we go. The mask is off. Let's still look at the bottom. Yeah. So everything is nice and separated. So now the mask just simply slides off. In my case, towards my left. So right here at the start, I'm going to mention the functionality of these two protruding pieces of plastic with the little holes or dents made into them. So you have two on this side and you also have two on this one as well. So these are actually, you could say, the male parts of the overall locking system that enables the oval front piece of the mask to be firmly locked or secured onto the main body of the enclosure as such. You can see the locking latches here right underneath. Here is one and the other here. So when you push the mask again up, this aligns perfectly. You see, okay, okay, also on the other side. So also here as well, here underneath. I'll show these locking latches uh, in a couple of moments, but I'm going to mention this right here on, at the start that is important that you don't break them. Now why is that? Uh, maybe in your case the, the front oval mask won't come off as easily as it did in my case, but uh, these locking latches here, you could say the female part on each side, so two here and two on the other, uh, these serve with the addition of these protruding pieces of plastic as a 
overall locking system so if you break these latches and let's say that you grab your NAS device in this manner and you I don't know want to uh, carry it you know in the process when you do this you might just slide the mask of the enclosure as such or NAS device and this and then this main body with the hard drive inside might fall down to your ground that's why it is very important that you don't uh, break these locking latches here but of course it also depends on how you grab your NAS device if you want to take it from uh, one room into the other or one place to the other so that's the functionality now much more up close on the locking system at least on the oval front piece of the mask so here you have two of these locking latches and two here and you see also here you have a little bit of protruding plastic as well and here and also on the top so that with the with those dents made into the plastic that enables that this mask is firmly fitted or secured onto the main body of the enclosure okay maybe we'll look inside so basically nothing special maybe a little here okay of course you have these rails here the plastic rails also on the bottom now these serve to line up with uh, these two protruding pieces of plastic also on here on this side one and the other and also here on the top and here this is where uh, the mask slides slides onto the body so these two uh, sides uh, they are firmly placed uh, onto the main body of the enclosure so they don't stick out or away from the main body so everything is snugly and secure but still you know some spider might crawl in here <laughs> because of this textured plastic which serves as passive cooling and also here and naturally on the bottom okay so I'm going to stop a little bit at the bottom you have these four uh, almost transparent but whitish rubber feet which have two functions one is of course to provide the necessary traction or friction when you put the nest device on a flat surface whether it is a desk or a shelf or anything like it so the drive doesn't move up and down left and right in other various other directions and therefore uh, very easily falling off your table and onto the ground especially if you have pets in the house and the other function is they work as an additional shock absorber preventing vibrations uh, from the environment reaching the secured hard drive inside therefore extending its lifetime now this is the part number of the main plastic body of the enclosure so if yours become broken this is the number that you want to pay attention to if you want to get a spare or replacement part so we're going to have a little quick step at the back of the NAS device as well here you have a little sticker with some of the certifications listed on them. This is the Kensington lock port or the hole for it. I don't know how much this is necessary nowadays, but nevertheless, the manufacturer still provides one. This is the reset hole or the port for it. The USB 3.0 expansion connector or the USB port. The Ethernet or LAN connector and the DC input jack so that's the back side of the device so now as promised the proof or the confirmation that the hard drive that is residing or is placed in this enclosure is not 3 terabytes and not even a red edition or red family from Western Digital maybe a little more up close on the label if you want to make note of the information uh, basically this uh, hard drive that I used 
for the purpose of this video presentation is brand new hasn't been used zero hours uh, on the clock at least that is what my buddy crystal disk info reports back so but i have installed the operating system uh, that comes with my cloud onto this hard drive okay i'll show you the back so this is the back side here you have or here you see how the basically controller is secured onto the main body aluminum body of the hard drive through three phillips screws these are much longer ones and underneath between the controller and the aluminum body of the hard drive you have uh, three black distance hole spacers because this uh, controller isn't it's a little bit suspended in the air so you need some sort of spacers in between okay so the hard drive again has you could say an additional shock absorber system used here through the four rubber feet that are mounted onto the aluminum body of the hard drive through the torque screws that are inside this or these uh, rubber feet so it is nice and snugly and secure now how do you get this hard drive out of the main body of the enclosure do you see anything unusual? Well, here at the top, well, depending on your orientation, you have this pair or these two pieces of black colored plastic. And these two are actually removable fully or partially, but in order for you to get the hard drive with the controller out of the main body of the enclosure, you only need to loosen them up partially. So you don't need to take them out fully but if you achieve this well kudos to you because I haven't uh, I wasn't able to achieve this so I'm going to flip the drive on the other side so I'll show you those uh, locking mechanism that Western Digital uses so each one of the, these two plastic pieces are gripped onto this part of the main body of the enclosure this protruding piece of plastic here by two locking or latching legs so one is located here and the other right here and then of course on this side you have uh, this leg and in this very small compartment is the other one so in order to get the hard drive out of the enclosure you just need to loosen up this leg and this one and here uh, you can use a you know dull or a sharp flat-headed screwdriver and the same uh, a knife but probably I'll use my prying uh, silver piece or rod in order to loosen up this leg so how do you do that you just simply press downwards and a little towards the right and it will come loose and also hit down and towards the left you could probably remove this one uh, completely because there's enough room here inside so you could also loosen up this leg but <laughs> it's impossible to do this in this one because it's a very small compartment but you know i wouldn't uh try removing these two uh, as such because you might break one of those locking legs and that would uh, make the hard drive inside of the enclosure a little less stable so now you see uh that this piece of locking plastic is at an angle sticking out and also this one that is because I have uh, removed or lifted the legs the locking legs on this side and on this side as well so now uh, the hard drive with the controller is easy to get out of this main body of the enclosure so now I'll just push the drive slightly in this direction so it sticks out a little bit from the enclosure and then I'll try to push it out so all right, I'll change the camera a little bit so now we just want to push it out 
There you go. And the drive is free. So now you have a much better overview on how these two black pieces, plastic pieces, how they uh, operate or what is their function. You have a half circle here and this top piece uh, forms the complete circle and therefore of course locking the hard drive into place through those two rubber feet. And also here on this side, this one as well. Uh, the plastic is a little scraped off, but no worries. So you can try to remove these two fully, but <laughs> I haven't really uh, succeeded. But if you do, well, great. But if you want to reassemble or put the hard drive back into the enclosure, uh, it's not really necessary to have both of these uh, black plastic pieces fully removed. Like you can just leave them in this position and I'll be more than enough or suitable when you want to reinsert your hard drive in back into the main body of the enclosure. Now maybe we can have a little more closer look on the other sides, the inner side of the main body of the enclosure. So again, important, don't break these pieces of plastic as well. They are the ruler for the oval front piece of the mask and also here at the top as well. Well, this is basically the bottom. Also, you have two here and two over here. I don't know why these two and also uh, at the top are slightly different than these two here. But, you know. Okay, so... Here you have a little discoloration or the plastic has been bruised. I can switch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, still everything is intact, not anything is broken. Okay. Well, that's it. Now we're going to disassemble the rest. So the next thing that I'm going to disassemble or remove is this controller. So I'll be needing my screwdriver set, the one that I've showed you in the beginning of this uh, video presentation. So I'll get my Phillips bit ready to remove these three screws. And I'm all done. So now we just want to slide the controller of the hard drive, pushing it downwards. Now underneath you have those black hole distance spacers, so make sure you don't lose them because you will need them when you will want to uh, reattach the controller back onto your hard drive, if that is in your plan in the future. So this is where they're located. Here's one the other and the third. So now we're going to uh, touch on or stop a little on the controller and make some notes about this. Now this is the controller from the back side of the ROF from Western Digital MyCloud, 3 terabytes. Uh, so let's say that your intermediate circuit or printed circuitry board or whatever you want to name this piece of electronics goes bad so whether it goes bad fully or partially so in essence that you would require a replacement part these numbers here that are etched on the back side of the controller these are the ones that you want to pay attention to because you want to get uh, an exactly same or a good approximation to the same controller that went faulty so I'm sure that you won't have any troubles getting the exact uh, controller in terms of this part of the code. But in regards to the revision uh, data code, here you will have some problems. So you want to get a exactly the same one or a very good approximation. So let's also check out what is 
written on these two labels and this text will be probably very hard to read I'll do my best mm. well, I think that you can make out the numbers yeah now it's better so there is some difference uh, between these numbers over here and the one that is uh, etched on here but this is uh, the one that she should be referring to so of course here you have the soldering joints for for the connectors underneath we'll talk about them in a moment when we flip the board so all the joints seem to be solid a little much more on the components so these are surface mount devices or SMDs in short C signifies for capacitor R for resistor so you have a bunch of these on the back now this is the front view of the controller from your WD My Cloud. so we're going to comment a little bit about the components on this board and various connectors of their off as well so here at the bottom of course naturally you have your SATA 3 or 2 hard drive connector so here of course you would connect your hard drive probably you could also attach a 2.5 inch storage device as well maybe a solid state drive especially when the one or two terabyte uh, models would become much more cheaper maybe you could also play with that option as well then of course here you have on the left side the DC input power jack the Ethernet or LAN also RJ45 connector USB 3.0 uh, port for expansion and the reset switch uh, I also want to point out that here at the DC power port this uh, piece of SMD element here with the zero printed on it I think this is the fuse maybe somebody will uh, in the comment section um, below prove me wrong but I think this is the fuse so if you have trouble with powering up your NAS device uh, you should check with your digital multimeter whether you have some voltage flowing through it if this is opened then the fuse went sour so you just want to replace that and hopefully everything will be fine because I remember this from uh, laptop motherboards okay here you have an empty position on the board SW1 meaning switch 1 so if this is switch 2 what was the function of this and why wasn't it present something here <laughs> also here this could this looks like another USB port could be attached here or soldered onto interesting and also here you know another empty slot God knows what uh, this could be used for and here you have the LED indicator light uh, of course here you have this black piece of plastic and here the transparent one so underneath here you have probably an RGB type of SMD LED that changes colors according to different voltage settings and of course the program uh, the operating system that is running on the hard drive and what the main processor this one here uh, signals so you would always want to get that stable blue light uh, here never the red or the yellow or the violet or the purple one I'll probably remove this so I could show you how that LED looks like so I managed to get this black piece off so this is how it looks like a very 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 tiny SMD LED if you're curious that is of course now this here would be the K2 
cache or the RAM for this uh, main processor. I think this is a one gigabit uh, DDR3 SD RAM, so that translates into uh, 256 megabytes of RAM. And then, of course, you have the main processor. So this is this thing right here. So this is a Mind Speed Concerto. And this thing basically has two Cortex A9 ARM cores running at around 650 uh, megahertz. At least that is what is written in the data sheet. I'll probably put a link to both of these chips in the description box below and probably for the others or at least I'll just uh, write the text that is written on them. I think this one serves for uh, connectivity in terms of the LAN port. Okay. And then of course, you know, you usually have your capacitors and resistors here. Also here, I think these are transistors, these three, and also this one over here. So that's it on the controller, I think. Yeah. So that you know a little bit about what each component is, where it is located, and so forth. Now, before we move on to the rest of the disassembly, I popped uh, the top cover of this device here. And these actually look like very miniaturized toroidal transformers. Hmm. Very interesting, some sort of resin is covering them. And of course this is the electrolytical capacitor as well. So that's it. Now we really move on with the rest of the disassembly. So this is basically just the easy part, the last part of this video presentation as such. The last part in this disassembly is to remove the remaining pieces or parts that are still latched onto or connected, screwed onto the hard drive as such. And that is the three or basically four rubber feet. So these three rubber feet, each of one of them has a torque screw inside that is of course then secured onto the aluminum body of the hard drive. While in this case here, this rubber feet is attached onto a metallic piece and then this piece is then secured or screwed onto the body of the hard drive through two of its own torque screws. So these two screws and the ones over here and these two rubber feet are the same ones. So one size. While this one over here is a much more smaller one. So in essence you should prepare two torque bits or two torque screwdrivers to be precise. Even though um, actually the first time that I disassembled this my cloud, these three rubber feet they weren't actually secured onto the aluminum body of the hard drive as such through a torque screwdriver. So you could basically just unscrew them using uh, you know, your fingers. They were not secured on tight. While these two screws here on this metallic piece they were really hard to get them loose. So a little bit of a warning. So now I'm just going to show you the torque screws. You see over here and here. This is how the rubber feet as such look like. So these two are the same but also on this side. The, these two are also the same to these two. But these ones originally they were really screwed on tight. I thought I was going to deform the torque bit uh, when I was trying to loosen them up. So, but this one is really, really small. Come on camera. Well, you get the idea. So now we just need to unscrew all of these screws and we're done. Well, you have reached the end of this video presentation on how to disassemble or take apart your Western Digital MyCloud single bay NAS device. 
So in conclusion, I hope you enjoyed the video presentation, the disassembly process, my needless comments or necessary ones, depending on your view and opinion. So leave the necessary uh, criticism or approvals in the comment section below. Also your ideas, propositions, uh, corrections, if I misspelled something or overcomplicated something in the entire video presentation, let me know. I'm always trying to uh, make my videos simple as possible and therefore also short, but well, you know, I'm a very complicated person. So share, like, subscribe, and we'll see you in another video very soon. This is David and have a great day in the new 2018 year.